Hello everyone. Here is the progress that we have made to our bedroom in our dollhouse. Today we will be working on furniture, the dresser. Our dresser is this one that we're going to work today and this is from the Greenleaf 1982 furniture kit. These are the pieces that I have to select. All of the ones that are labeled wardrobe. When I am, uh, when we're finished, it should look something like this. The pieces for the wardrobe are found on this sheet. Because this is so old, there's a lot of debris coming off of the board itself. I have to wipe it down. Look at all the the color that comes off of it. In the past, what I did is that I pulled out each one of the pieces and then I prepped it individually. That turned out to be very labor intense. What I will do today is that I will work on the entire board prior to separating the pieces. It will be easier for me to sand the entire board than one of the pieces at a time. And then all I will have to do is sand the, um, the sides. It's very brittle for being so old. It's one of the drawbacks of working on something vintage. Although I love the look, I love how they are old, but at the same time, I have to be very careful. It's very dry, so to hydrate it, to condition the wood, I will be adding this oil to it. And I probably should have put gloves, but I'm going to try to be very careful and keep it off my hand. And after I do the entire board, I'm, I will allow allow it to rest so it can be absorbed. And I'm finishing the reverse side of the board too. And actually, this reverse side looks a lot prettier than the front. Take a look. And as you can see, it's absorbing really quickly, so I may not have to wait very long before I can come and do a little bit of sanding on the entire board. I've done a little bit of sanding on both sides. I have used a fine a coarse grit and then I switched over to finer grit. This is what it looks like now. Full disclosure, I want you to learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. Sanding should be first, then the oil because I had to repeat the process all over again. And I think now I'm ready to start punching out the pieces. So going by my sheet, um, this is the wardrobe top. And hopefully they won't, oh, it came out perfectly. No, no, no broken pieces. This is the wardrobe bottom. This is the wardrobe front. And here is all the details, so I have to be careful with this part. I don't want to leave any pieces behind. Okay. So this is the front, okay? And then I'll continue doing, selecting all the other pieces. I have all of my pieces out of the board. And there are only seven pieces, sides, top, bottom, and this is the front. And what do you know? It doesn't have a back. I guess 
they felt that if they if, if you set it against the wall you won't need a, a back but we're gonna fix that okay um, I now have sanded all of these sides it really paid off to prep the board rather than each one of the pieces individually and now I'm ready to start gluing them together so this these are the, the back, the thick leg is the back. And these are exactly the same. So I don't have to worry that one is the top and one is the bottom because they're exactly the same. Okay, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. In order for me, whenever there are right angles, in order for me to be able to glue them together successfully <laughs> with the sharp angles is by using my blocks of Legos. So this I will do right now. And I just have a little bit of glue right here to apply to my piece. There's not that much to glue on this one. so. I have to get it right the first time and this is going to be right here so see now I put my block right here and my other one on the other side and when I hug them together I can't go wrong and because I'm using carpenter's wood glue I'm gonna have to hold it for a little bit until it is not going to dry completely but it will dry enough so that I can go on and do the other side while this one settles then I'll start prepping the next one the other side a little glue in the opening and a little bit of glue Since there isn't so much to glue the two pieces together, I must make sure that wherever I can add the glue, I'm doing so. I think I'm getting ready to turn it on the side. give them just a few minutes to dry. These are the doors. And these are the cutouts that came with the kit for it. These will be the mirrors. So I think I can, while that piece is drying, I think I can start gluing them. can't touch this side because then I will get it dirty and these are gonna be the mirrors pretty nice looking pretty nice looking for having been in a box for over 30 years almost 40 I have the frame ready and this is the front of the arm one it goes right here and because I have my corners at right angles then this fits perfectly okay so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it on glue the face to the frame and my glue is already getting tacky so I better hurry up quickly before it dries. Okay, let's see.
Wow, how quickly it starts taking shape. This is what we have so far. Again, wait for it to dry. Well, I am going to use basswood, 1 16th of an inch in thickness. And there are some things I always use because they work for me. Graph paper is one of them. I made a template by using this graph paper. I don't have to worry about my drawing straight lines. They're already there for me. I take advantage and I drew the shape right here. Um, I don't think I need a miter box. I'm going to try and do it just like so. Okay. Uh, maybe I do need a ruler. You would think that because it's so thin that it would only take a couple of passes with my saw, but I'm not applying too much pressure. My, the back of the armor is ready. I think a little bit of smoothing of all the edges and the corners. And I don't, this is going to react differently to the stain because it's a completely different type of plywood. But this is definitely better than that, than having the back open. And then I had a little bit left over. So I decided to cut this piece that I will insert in here to create a division between the side that's going to hold the rod for the clothes to hang from. And this side will have some drawers, even if they're open. So for the drawers, I cut these little pieces right here that I will insert and they'll be open but then you'll be able she'll be able to place some folded clothing right here the inside of the armoire I'm not going to paint however I don't want to leave the wood bare so I'm going to apply some of the same finishing and protection for wood It almost looks like gelatin. <laughs> I'm gonna try to go for something like this so that it matches the bed because everything else in the house is the color of wood, natural wood. The living room, the dining room, and even elements of the kitchen. So I'm going to paint this one. For that I will use acrylic paint. And I'm going to add a touch of white so that it's not too blue. And a little bit, just a drop of black so that it's grayish blue, not like a soft baby blue. Okay, and hopefully this will be enough for the entire cabinet because I didn't measure how much paint I put of each color so to recreate it would be kind of difficult. I'm going to add a little more white. And a tiny little bit more black. It's still, a, it's still too blue. Okay, this is good. This is 
this is pretty close to what I want and then with a sponge brush then I'll just start painting the body of my cabinet Now that it's dry, I'm going to try to do some ornamental painting with these tiny little brushes. This is how it is right now. I painted it blue, then I made my designs in a lighter color. Then I added one coat of the protector. And then to make it look old, I used a dirty sand piece of sandpaper to give it this appearance. For the interior, I have measured out and this is going to be the height of the first drawer so let's see a little bit of glue on my on my board In this way, I don't have to worry about it being straight. These guys will help me keep it in place until it dries for a little bit. Then I will add two more. And they can sit right there until they dry. My vertical piece that will divide I have to add glue to the edge of these little pieces. And then to the top and the bottom of my divider. So this is what the closet is going to look like. I will be using a crafting stick for the closed um, hanger rod and this really gets very tricky. It has to be cut to precision. A little big it won't fit, 
and a little small, then it won't stick to the sides. And I have nothing that's going to be holding it other than the glue. So I'm going to use my Legos again. And I'll insert it here and make a little mark with a pencil as to where the rod needs to be. So where it needs to be glued. So here is my little marking, my pencil marking, and I have the same on the other side. And I'm gonna be putting the glue directly on those dots rather than put it in on the dowel. And then later I'm, I will be adding more glue around it because this will be really a, a wimpy, not a very strong connection. And I don't wanna be putting a support. Okay, so now this will go here. Okay, and now I'm gonna be holding it just for a little bit so that it can stand, so that it can stay there by itself. I have a little bit left over from the paper that is the mirror for the doors. And I'm going to use my die cutter because I can also insert, I can place one mirror in the inside of my closet. interior is all complete. Maybe these guys are going to help me to keep them in place. Okay, so they have to be flush right here at the bottom. And I cannot have opening on in either one of the two sides. I have a little bag here of mini clothespins. And from the clothespins, I'm only going to use the spring that it's this little spring right here. Here is the little spring and I actually only need on one of the sides I'll be trimming off it's pretty close to the coil. And on the other side, I'm gonna leave a, just a little bit. Always protect your eyes when you're cutting something like this because it will become a projectile when it snaps away and you don't want something like that landing anywhere near you. Okay, and this is going to be my holder. And a different glue for different projects. For this project, I don't want anything liquid. I want to have control of exactly where it is applied to. So the, um, the idea with this is that I'm going to glue it to the side of the armoire. But it is very important that this coil is not glued to the door. If it's glued to the door, the whole idea will just not work at all. So I can either, let's see, I'm gonna try to do it directly, directly onto the coil. And it cannot be too much because if it's too much, when I press it, it will try to go to the door. And that is exactly what we are trying to avoid. Okay, here we go. And 
and I want the, the little excess of metal to lay flat against the wood of the armoire so that it can help it stabilize it. Okay, I'm going to wipe off the little bit of excess of glue. So then I'll do another one. The next one is going to be glued onto the door, but it is important again that it is not glued to the armor. Then the third one goes to the armor, but not to the door. And then repeat the same thing right here at the bottom and of course on the other door. I believe that all of the hinges are now dry. They feel like they're dry. I hope I'm right. And I will now take this tiny little pin. This is a jewelry finding. It's called a head pin. You can also try to use a sewing pin um, or a very, very small nail. But I doubt that you, I couldn't find small enough nails for this project. So now I will drop it in here. And the same thing on the other side. And I can now go ahead and remove the rubber bands. Okay. And this one is gonna be a little trickier because it's much tighter and I don't want to disturb anything. works if this was successful my doors should open if they don't open I'm gonna be very sad oh my goodness I am very happy the doors do open and close after installing the hinges I went ahead and put a little piece of magnet. This is from a refrigerator magnet. And then I put the same thing here. They exert a weak attraction, so it's not gonna grab it from my hands, but it will keep it, but it will keep the doors from opening up when it's not in use. So let's see if it works. I'm turning it upside down and they do not open. And last step was to add, a couple of jewelry beads as the door handles or the door knobs. So this is the conclusion of our project. If you saw here something that you think you can, uh, that is interesting for someone you know, don't be shy, share the video and stay with us for the next time. We will be making all of the accessories that go inside the wardrobe. Thank you so much for watching from Lloyd Allhouse.